Okay, nothing better than a fresh cup of coffee. Let's go settle in. Uh, let's do this. We're, uh, session number three. This is all according to plan. God is up to good things all the time. We don't need to worry about him. He has got everything looked after. Um, as we approach Christmas, now I know this Christmas is different with COVID. We don't have, you know, the big family get togethers and that. We're, you know, doing different things, smaller things. We hope everything works out. You plan it, you plot it. Maybe you make a big meal, you have like 20 different sides and you just, I only have one oven. How do I keep everything warm? You're just trying to make everything work out and work out right. My favorite Christmas movie, um, Oh, there's, I mean, there's so many of them. The Grinch, you gotta watch Home Alone, you gotta watch the Christmas story and see, you know, the, the, the little kid put his tongue on the, the fence post. Fantastic stuff. But the best Christmas movie, nay, the best movie of all time is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Can't get enough of that movie. It is my favorite Christmas movie. Clark Griswold has these great big plans for a fantastic family Christmas vacation, but nothing, nothing in the whole movie works out. He puts, you know, all these uh, thousands of lights on his house and nothing works. He invites tons of family to come in because, I mean, what, what, what's, what's better than having both families, the in-laws and the outlaws, at your house for Christmas? You knew it was not going to work out, but he thought it would work out really well. His Christmas bonus didn't come. Cousin Eddie shows up. This is not a good Christmas. We have big dreams of everything working out just right and everything being fantastic. And uh, my dad would say hunky-dory. Uh, but quite often in life, guaranteed in life, no matter how hard we plan, no matter how hard we hope, yeah, it's not going to go right. It's not going to go according to plan. That's why we have plan B. We have plan C. We have plan D. Just in case everything go south. Mary finds out from the angel that uh, you're going to have a baby, you're going to get pregnant, and it's going to be the son of God. You're going to be... <laughs> Good luck explaining that one to mom and dad. She didn't see the angel one more time. That was it. The angel was gone. The angel didn't show up at all ever again to Mary, but she's holding on to this promise. And you'd think, okay, God, if you got this in store for me, I'm carrying God's son in my body and I'm going to deliver the Messiah. You're going to look after me, right? Well, did, did you see my eyes roll there? The governor says that everybody needs to be taxed. But before you can be taxed, we got to know who you are. We need you to go to your ancestral home. So, okay, we got to go to Bethlehem. It's like a hundred kilometers away. Oh yeah, we don't have a car. We got to walk. We're going to take a donkey. Oh, and you're nine months pregnant. Good luck with that. And when they get to the town, they realize that there's no rooms left in any inns. And I mean, what are you going to do? Your wife is about to have a baby. We got to go somewhere. They find a stable. Yeah, you can imagine that conversation went well. Joseph telling his wife, we have got to sleep with the cows. Not according to plan. Nothing worked out. Nothing worked out. Mary settles in to have this baby in the middle of all the filth and in the middle of all this hay and mangers and all the rest. You've got to be kidding me. There's no way I'm doing this. Remember when, when we were kids, my mom was really picky about hotel rooms and she'd go in and check out the hotel room and she'd do the bed check and look behind the headboard. And yeah, there's a couple times we did not stay in hotels because it didn't pass muster. Mary had no choice, but God had a plan. Even though the angel didn't show up again, God had a plan. Even though things weren't going the way that they ought to, God had a plan and he was still up to great things, still on the throne, still looking to do right by Mary, looking to solve her problem, hear her prayer. Here, check this out. Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 11 says this, It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Long before, get this, long before we ever heard about Christ and got our hopes up, He had His eye on us. He had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose He is working out in everything and in everyone. Here, just in case that didn't sink in, let me read it one more time. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, He had His eyes on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose. He is working out in everything and in every 
one. Be encouraged today. I don't care how bad things are. I don't care how difficult things are. I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter. God knows you. He knows your name. He picked you out. He called you out of the crowd. He wants to put your feet on solid ground this Christmas. He wants to deliver you. He wants to give you strength, bring you blessing, joy, favor, hope, everything that you need. It's not all bad news. This is great news. There's a Savior on the throne who knows your name and loves you and has good things in store for you. Be encouraged today. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Back to the coffee.